Hello and welcome everyone, this is Dmitry and we are having another Network Programmability stream. Today is part 30 uh, th uh, and today we are going to talk about, well, not just talk about, we will, we will explore HashiCorp Vault. Uh, it's, um, um, it's a product that allows you to store your application a secret safe. It's very popular um, in the software engineering world. Um, we'll talk why once we start actually digging into it. Um, so a couple of things that I would like to share with you folks before we start. Uh, one thing is um, I wanted to tell again that I am very proud about the my previous stream, uh, uh, which was about Python async IO and I was trying to also introduce I think I have support into Nornir. Um, I unfortunately I posted the recording late it was posted on I think Friday uh, or maybe Thursday I don't recall and um, the reason I'm very proud about that particular stream is um, there is not a lot of information out there not a lot of examples out there on the internet showing you how you can apply Python async IO to the networking, to uh, to talk to network devices. Uh, so uh, there are examples, there are also some tests uh, and I also included timestamps in the video with the part where I actually run my scripts that I wrote. So if you even if you don't have time, check it out and um, Probably you will get curious. Um, you will, you could understand how powerful um, asynchronous techniques are in programming. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, that was about the previous stream. Now a couple of news. Um, there isn't too much happening. Uh, well, happened to me this week. Um, I was you know mostly working on my on my stuff at work. Uh, but one thing that um, comes to my mind is uh, I was working on the um, Python library for the thing called uh, Smartsheet. And Smartsheet is kind of like Excel in the cloud, I would say. Um, it's a way like to store the spreadsheets in the cloud and share them and have like, come, you know, concurrent use between multiple users and there is already a library for it but um, I think they were lacking some very key features and previously I was maintaining a fork for it I really wanted my PRs to be merged but they do not seem to care so I made the decision okay I'm actually going to write a separate library and publish it on PyAPI so this library is the, like the beta version is almost ready. I think maybe like Tuesday, it's going to be released at least the first version uh, on Py API. So it's called Simple Smartsheet. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, I'm very excited about releasing something on Py API, sharing some of the work that I'm doing with, uh, with other people. Uh, now, another thing that I wanted to talk to you about is the second piece, which is uh, Python utters, C utters, and Marshmallow. So while I was writing this uh, simple Smartsheet library, I've, I really advocate for user experience first. So like user experience is, um, from my perspective in the libraries is, much more important than feature coverage. And this was the focus of this library. One piece that comes up often is when you're writing any kind of API wrapper. Okay, so, and um, there are a couple of things that I'm writing API wrapper already. So one of them is at the library for the um, Cisco SD1. And another one is this simple Smartsheet. Anytime you interact with any kind of REST API, it comes up all the time, like how your library architecture looks like, 
how do you specify fields? How do you convert those fields into Python objects? How do you convert nested objects, uh, nested data in like dictionaries and stuff to Python objects? And I spend a lot of time investigating my options and uh, this is the um, the bundle that I'm using for the simple smart sheet and I liked it uh, uh, that I'm going to use it for other of my projects so uh, and I'm going just very briefly in a couple of sentences talk about um, every one of those libraries so okay besides these three that I chose I was also investigating Pydentic um, Python data classes, Marshmallow annotations, and um, something else I don't recall it anymore. So what does this library do? So if you think about any kind of API interaction, first you have, you get, you know, you send your HTTP request, you get some data, and this data looks like, well, it's a JSON most, uh, most of the time, but then you convert it to Python, then it's Python dictionaries, and uh, lists okay so one piece here is okay you have this but you would like to construct python objects you know by, like python classes uh, and at first it seems like very easy you know like you know you can build very easy uh, think with keyword arguments in python which will take anything from your dictionary and will assign as an attribute if you do that though uh, you will lose things like auto completion in your library, so your ID will not be able to tell you what is the um, attribute there, and so on and so forth. So, this kind of dynamic uh, assignment is two edged sword, sword. Another possible way is to have uh, in your class defined all of these different attributes there, and then define your init method, which will basically try to map the dictionary stuff to the these attributes in the class um, well and there is another thing which is kind of painful what do you do about nested objects so in case of let's say smart sheet you take an object called sheet and it contains cell uh, it contains columns and rows uh, and those will be you know when you do it via rest you will get lists okay so what do you do with those right uh, if you just assign this stuff to your um, uh, to your class attribute which will have like sheet.cells is equal to list but then inside of this uh, list you will not have python objects you will have um, uh, you will have just a list of I don't know, strings or a list of dictionaries whatever so now you have inconsistency in your library okay now another interesting piece okay what if your keys that you receive in your rest api are like camel case or something that do not make sense to use a, a developer and you would like to convert them to let's say snake case or maybe to redefine them completely then it's even more painful, okay? So that's why I was trying to look on the different alternatives. I was playing with a lot of different stuff during this week. And so far, this is my current choice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the source code for this library that I'm writing. Again, very briefly, since it's not today uh, today's focus, but maybe it will inspire you for your own projects, how you can, uh, use the stuff that I found towards the best for my use case. So I will show you the base model and I think it will be helpful for you. So let me move this to another group. So actually, you know what, not this, I will actually show you something like shit. So here, uh, these three libraries so what do they do so marshmallow library is the the way to convert the keys and validate the data so for example um you can convert any kind of camel case to snake case and you can also verify that oh okay this kind of thing must be 
uh, in the range from 0 to 5. And you can do checks like this using the Marshmallow library. It's actually much more powerful, but you know this is what I'm using it for. Essentially, it's uh, about defining the schema for your um, for your data. So here you can see, let's say, class sheet schema, which inherits from like core schema, but essentially it inherits from Marshmallow, where I define fields and I say what those fields are. And you see, in some cases, I specify this data key attribute, which is different than the attribute itself, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is basically schema declaration uh, where every field has some kind of type. There is like fields nested when you have um, when you have uh, you know one schema refers to another schema and stuff like this. Now others library is very similar to Python data classes, which is a feature in Python 3.7, and others is the library which is basically classes code generation. So instead of you defining init method in your classes, in you would define something like this. You don't have init method, but you you define your um, fields in your class. You also define them with uh, type annotations. Uh, and the um, others will take care of this for you. So it will um, it will assign if you pass the if you pass the dictionary. Uh, with uh, this kind of attributes, it will assign them to um, to your object. Okay, so basically, it's yeah, just Python code generation, not to write boilerplate code for the uh, class initialization. Gosh, that was hard to pronounce. And uh, C others. Um, so what this does, it actually helps you in converting the objects, especially nested objects. So. If you just pass a list of something to others, uh, it will just assign this as a list. So it will not do anything with this. Uh, but maybe you have a list of dictionaries which would you like to convert to some nested objects. So Seater, uh, Seaters has a way for doing this kind of um, deserialization of the uh, data to Python objects. So this is a bundle that I use. I really enjoy my end uh, design for this. I think it's quite extensible. Um, so yeah, you know, if you have the same problem, I encourage you to check out. The main benefit is that I have cut out the completion. I can, as a user, I can very quickly see what kind of fields are expected in the object. I don't have to like go through, you know, deep dive into code. I have a schema. So I can just you know, immediately see what is expected. So um, I think very cool. So yeah, that's all from, you know, um, news thing. So, uh, and now let's actually dive into today's topic, which is HashiCorp world. So why is it a thing and why are we covering it? Okay. And um, yeah, so here's the thing. Almost any kind of uh, application that you develop, regardless of the programming language, you have some kind of secrets, okay? You have some kind of passwords, you have some kind of API tokens, um, stuff like this, okay? Sometimes IP addresses could be included in that too. You can check out this information into Git, okay? You can because then everyone else can would be able to see this kind of data. Um, and is it especially bad for your production? You know, obviously you don't want to put that into Git. So for years, people people uh, have been using what is called environmental variables. So you define on your you know where you run your application, you have environmental variable and you know you put all of your secret there and so on and you know that's how you manage it this works okay however this is not scalable at all like you know on every single server you have to define this kind of environmental variables and hopefully you will not miss any, any kind of variable and stuff like this very painful 
Um, another potential way to solve it, and I'm using it in one of my projects, is uh, if you're using any kind of CI system, you know, for example, I am very fond of uh, GitLab CI. Um, in GitLab CI, you have piece called secrets or variables and you can put your variables there uh, and um, you could use those variables to build your containers so for example in that particular use case um, i'm having this environmental variables and which are defined in gitlab ci and when my container is being built with my application it actually takes these variables during the build process uh, in that case, my environmental variables are part of the container itself, but it's not a big of a deal. That said, we still have to make, you know, there are a couple of problems with that. Uh, well, first, they are part of the container itself, so it means everyone who has access to the loading the container will be, be, will be able to see the secrets. So you have to, you know, care about that. Another piece is, well, you probably also want to make sure that you are using your private GitLab CI, not the, not the, uh, you know, just GitLab.com, since probably you don't want to store your secrets in their cloud. You would like to have your secrets under your control. So probably this will mean that you will need to um, have um, your GitLab CI instance, well, which a lot of people, a lot of companies do. Uh, but again, um, putting the secrets inside of the container itself may be risky. It really depends on the use case. For my use case, it was absolutely fine. So what do you do? So here are uh, here's the point where um, this product comes into uh, into play, which is called uh, Vault from HashiCorp. There, are, there is vault from other vendors, you know, there is, for example, Ansible vault. The idea is very similar, yet uh, HashiCorp vault seems to be the only, the most popular way to store secrets, okay? Basically, the idea here that you store your secrets in one central place, which exposes an API, and then whenever your application needs um, whenever your application needs uh, those kind of secrets it uh, goes to vault uh, asks them for it obviously you would need to you know also provide some kind of way to identify the um, to do authentication and authorization which i do not know yet how it's done in vault but you know i have some suspicions um but then once you're authorized once your application is authorized you can get access to your uh, secrets, which will be managed in one central place. So, um, so far for my personal projects, well, and not only personal, but projects at work as well, I didn't have a need in, uh, in the vault most of the time. Uh, but I heard a lot of people were talking about it and, uh, you know, uh, I decided, you know, it i need to be more literate right and uh, i would like to see it in action i would like to understand how hard it is to to getting uh, to get started with this uh, and you know if it's worth it from like my own perspective and then there is a comment in the chat um let me let me read it so our build deployment system is custom and then there is a yaml file per repo and that's how you set configuration for the system when you deploy your containerized service it looks at the configuration and sees your referencing a vault pass and retrieves the vault pass and then injects it as an environmental variable in the container hmm interesting okay uh in this particular case no it, it's actually yeah it, it makes sense okay so let's uh oh before we start this one another thing um i have been streaming 
for almost a year now. I think uh, my year will be on uh, 25th of uh, December um, on, on Catholic Christmas. Um, and recently I understood that I kind of started to the topics that were on my list are kind of getting exhausted, okay? Um, I have obviously million ideas for like open source stuff and like how, you know, what kind of like code I would like to write and projects and all of that stuff. But I already told on the previous stream that um, it seems people are less interested in this kind of streams where, you know, I just, you know, have some idea on my own and I write code for it. Uh, I see those are not super popular um, and um, it, it seems like the more popular streams are about all of these different things that I can explore live. For example, um, according to the stats, very popular streams were about Netbox, about NetConfiank, about Ansible, uh, so stuff like that and the list of those topics kind of is just shrinking and shrinking and I kind of like I'm almost out of ideas for this one obviously every so often I will just you know write code for some open source libraries that I want to but you know I just told you that yeah, those are not very popular so why I'm telling you this now Please, if you have any kind of ideas that I haven't covered yet, um, it could be either a product or it could be just some idea, you know, uh, nothing comes to my mind right now, but, you know, something that you think it would be a great idea to see, uh, to, to see for yourself and for others how I would approach this kind of problem or how I would approach this kind of product uh please do let me know um and i will do my best to have it on my lists of upcoming streams so one uh, one um one thing that um, was mentioned to me was streaming telemetry and i absolutely agree this is one of the uh, topics that i i have been avoiding so far and i definitely want to play with this since i haven't played personally with it at all but I do have a very I have a suspicion that one stream will not be enough for that so uh, since stuff like you know streaming telemetry for example besides the part on the device itself you have to understand how to configure it properly and all of that stuff you also have to um, configure the you know the receiver the collector part you know elk stuck stuck for example and i haven't played with elk as well so this that part will be very new for me and i'm kind of hesitant that it may it may be that i spent three hours on the stream without getting anywhere uh, but at some point we are going to have streaming telemetry stream absolutely i'm just not sure when Another idea in the chat is about Kubernetes. Uh, if you haven't played with this, yes, Kubernetes is also on my list. Thank you for that. Uh, the only thing is uh, majority of the audience is actually, uh, you know, they are more network engineers and they are more curious about more networking related stuff. And I'm not sure that network engineers should have strong understanding of Kubernetes since they are not going to be deploying. They're not app developers, they're not DevOps teams most of the time. Um, so I don't know, but yeah, from my perspective, personally, I would like to play with this. Um, so yeah, if you come with any idea, just let me know by any means of communication like Twitter, and yeah, I will do my best to cover it in the future. Uh, okay, good. Uh, let's actually get started with Vault. So uh, I have just only one web page here, you know, I just put in the Google HashiCorp Vault and you know, let's, let's try to get started. Again, this will be my first experience with Vault. 
so far. So it says get started with Vault. So they say, okay, you have to install it, start it, your first secret, uh, and use this HTTP API. So I think what today we are going to do, well, we are obviously going to uh, install it to explore web GUI a little bit. And obviously we have to uh, explore REST API as well. So if you cover these three pieces, then I will be happy. So, uh, okay, so the first step is installing Vault. You know the how I don't like installing anything, so I'm pretty sure there will be Vault in Docker container. Um, okay, where to file issues, uh, HashiCorp, Docker Vault issues maintained by HashiCorp. Okay, this is what we need. Uh, let me see. Uh, open a couple of links. Vault is a tool for accessing um, security and accessing secrets. A secret is anything that you want to tightly control access to, such as API key, password certificates. Uh, Vault provides a unified interface to any secret, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, we chose Alpine. Kudos to you for that. It's a lightweight base, but with enough functionality, Vault always, uh, always runs under dumping it. I don't know what that means. Uh, it's built by HashiCorp. Running Vault container with no arguments will give you Vault server in development mode. For the provided entry point script, we also look for Vault subcommands to run Vault with a subcommand. For example, you can execute docker run Vault status and it will run doc uh, docker Vault status inside of the uh, container. Well. This kind of doesn't make sense. Probably, you know, how this will just run. It will start a new container and run world status, but probably you would, they wanted to mention like Docker exec or something. The entry point adds some special configuration. Um, the container exposes two optional volumes, slash world slash logs uh, for audit logs. By default, nothing is written here. The file uh, audit backend must be enabled. And fault file to use for writing persistent storage data when using file data storage plugin. By default, nothing is written there. And dev server uses in memory data store. Uh, okay, yeah, so it's good that I kind of look through this. So they say that, okay, for development server, you, you are going to store all of the data in memory and for like production, you would probably want to mount this volume and change config file. Container has a vault configuration set up at slash vault slash config and server will load any JSON config files, blah, blah, blah. Memory locking, no, this, we don't need that. Or we don't need that. Container will attempt to lock memory to prevent sensitive values from being swapped to the disk. Oh, interesting. So, since Vault is about keeping secrets secret, you know, in this case, they also say, okay, we, you would also want to prevent your uh, data from being swapped to disk. So, you have to do this. Uh, it runs as non used user. Okay. In running in development mode, two additional options can be set by environmental variables. Uh, this sets ID of the initial, this sets port. Okay. So this seems like a good place to start. So minus E will the fruit token ID my root. And will they have listen address? Uh, you know what? No, I will just run this. So let's do this. Let me see if I don't have any containers up and running right now, which I don't. So we will just docker run minus D. I will change this name to Walt. Okay. 
So this will pull the image. Oh, while it's loading, I forgot to tell you a story. So, and I, I posted it on Twitter, uh, I think yesterday. So recently I discovered a problem where, you know, well, from my home I have, um, I have a VPN connection to the office. Um, and, um, you know, I have a router which establishes that. And recently I found out that my provider seems to be dropping the encrypted uh, data every so often so you know like if the tunnel is up and running but then like after three hours of, of the tunnel being up and running sp packets in the middle are getting dropped but the tunnel doesn't go down because your uh, control pa panel uh, panel control uh, control plane is fine so isa camp is fine but the sp traffic is dropped so it seems like the tunnel is up, but the traffic is dropped. So, you know, and, you know, I was working with our internal team to understand what's going on. My provider is not really helpful, not really responsive. So, um, I couldn't, you know, solve it on their end. So what I decided to build just a very simple script, very simple EM script, which whenever it loses connection to our office is just reset the tunnel uh it clears the tunnel manually and reestablishes the tunnel and yeah it just you know it had it has been working fine for two days now and i'm happy with that so this kind of you know small automation use cases um i think really cool uh okay so our uh vault is up and running so if I say docker ps I see you vault right here it's uh, on the port mm, you know what I have to stop that and you know what I'm going to rm minus f The reason why I did that is because I forgot to uh, expose the port, which I have to do. So uh, it should be minus p. I will expose the same port. Okay. Okay. PS. Okay. So now um, I can local host to this port. Okay, so let's go ahead, I guess, to the GUI, and again, I haven't read anything, so let's see how, how hard it's going to be. Okay, it says sign in to vault. There are different ways to sign in. And uh, yeah, I guess I will actually have to go to documentation now. Uh, so let's see, get started with Walt. Your first secret. Well, first I think I will have to create an account or something there. World documentation, enterprise, learn, no, maybe docs. Okay, installing, verifying installation. Uh, yeah, let's, let's kind of go through this part. So uh, this will be docker exec uh, vault, min, vault minus h. Okay, verifying installation, uh, blah, 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 auth methods. Authentication methods are components in Vault that perform authentication and are responsible for assigning identity and send policies to user. Having multiple auth methods enables you to use an auth method that makes sense for a use case. 
For example, on developer machines, uh, GitHub auth method is easiest to use. Interesting. Hmm. No, I but I want to create my separate account. Enabling disabling all uh, methods and enabling all methods are similar to secret engines. They mounted. I would like to log in with the. Uh, what is this? With token. How do I do it with token? Um, April, Google Cloud, GitHub, LDAP, tokens. The token method is built in and automatically enabled. It allows users to authenticate using a token as well as create new tokens, reward secrets by token and more. Why CLI? The token is set directly as a header. Uh, yeah, I want token. How to create a token? This token create commands creates a new token that can be used for authentication. This token will be created as a child of currently authenticated token. Uh, Okay, let me just try. So, Docker exact vault, and this will be vault token create. Server, server gave a HTTP response to HTTPS client. Okay. This is harder than I thought it would be. I think somehow this I need to do this old dev uh, root token ID. I actually want to read about it first. I don't understand what this means. Whatever. 
Let's try stopping this. And uh, it's just setting initial auth token for vault. Should I be able to use this token when I uh, do API request? Okay. So this is an actual token, right? It's just what well, I mean. Uh, what is confusing to me is that uh, here they provide an example putting my root, right? But I don't know. Like if it's an actual token, just put some random string there. This sets an ID for initial generated root token. Just kidding. There. Okay. Whatever, so this should be uh, what minus e vault the fruit token ID and my secret token. Okay, so my secret token cup ID IPC lock P and let's actually have here the vault. Okay, what happened here? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So let me go ahead here again. And here I should be able to use my secret token, right? Secret token. Okay, perfect. Now QB hole and secret holders. Okay. Your first secret, writing a secret list. I uh, started by writing a secret. This is done very simply with vault KV, KV command shown below. Uh, this writes to the pair full vault to the past secret hello. We'll cover pass in more detail, but for now it's important that pass this prefix with secret, otherwise this example won't work. Secret prefix is where arbitrary secrets can be re uh, read and written. Okay, makes sense. So, uh, now I should say docker run. We will say, I'm thinking. I can do run. I minus a t and no it should be docker exec minus it um def world sh okay so world minus h okay so now i am i am inside of the container in the shell and i should be able to say world kv kv put secret and let's say let's say i don't know device um, net network pass network username network username and um, and they say, okay, you can even write multiple pieces. Oh, okay, so, okay, this is just kind of like an identifier. So let's say secret and we'll say, CSR, for example, and we will write multiple secrets. So here we'll write username is Cisco and password is Cisco. Okay, this I don't understand. Ser server gave a HTTP response to HTTPS client. Uh, server gave a HTTP response to HTTPS client.
the default address of the client uses HTTPS. Just set minus address parameter or set Okay. It would be good to check the config file. Um, I think they told that it should be somewhere in yeah here. Mm. It's empty. So the vault client by default tries to talk to HTTPS, but for local devs there is no search, so it fails. You just have to change the vault address environment or the config. But I have to change it for the client, not for the server, correct? And so far I am not sure how to do that. Okay, this is server config and well yeah I, I'm definitely running here in dev for the um, HTTP not HTTPS Okay, now I'm pretty sure that this vault other is... Okay, so vault other is actually for a client, right? Gosh, this is a little bit confusing. Yeah. Thank you. Vault dev listen address. I mean, I'm wondering, like, why it's not here? You know, like... If you would like to enable people to get started as fast as possible. Okay, so I have to then export this. So if I say export world other uh, will be HTTP localhost. Well, actually I have to check if I can ping localhost that it's being resolved to... Okay, it's being resolved. Fine. So export world address um, HTTP HTTP uh, localhost Okay, and now echo world other Okay, so now I should be able to say vault kb missing client token. Damn it, now I guess I have to log in. Login commands authenticates. Uh, by default, login uses uh, a token method. Okay, so then I say vault login and um, My secret token. My secret token. Okay. Successful, you are now authenticated. The token information displayed below is already stored in the token helper. You don't need to run vault login again. A future vault request will be uh, automatically using this token. Okay. So now I should be able to do this. And yeah, I have like created time. Just 
this I don't know what is destroyed version one. Uh, you know, like let's try this. And maybe there is like get as well. Interesting. When I did it with just Cisco 2, my another key was deleted. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. So username uh, Cisco and password Cisco. Okay. You can uh, log in by different method. I don't want to care about login method right now. List, read, write, delete. Okay. So uh, I guess if I go here, You have logged in with the root token as a security precaution. This root token will not be stored by your browser, and you will need to re-authenticate after window is closed or refresh. Okay, I would like to first create another token. So um, say I, I guess I will need to use this wall token create and uh, let's say this. And let's just go ahead and um, interesting why this token is not uh, like your UID what 16 or whatever that is uh, whatever <laughs> okay so let's go here and uh, Old. Okay. So I have this token and in the vault itself I should be able to find okay I have here the my CSR and I can look up the values here if I want to I can get them as JSON as well. Interesting. For, for now, it's very interesting to me that when you do this command again, it's you have to provide, if you need multiple values, you have to provide them all. Optional JSON, JSON output is very useful for scripts. Eh, whatever. And supported, you can also f get a field directly. Getting, as you might expect, secrets can be gotten. <laughs> okay. Um, output format is by spaced because just double check that I'm doing it correctly so it will be vault key key we get CSR I uh, secret CSR we usually just do like um, secrets up name up name and more Mm hmm okay makes oh okay so what, what you're saying is that oh uh, let's actually not use multiple key values in kind of like one leaf but if you need multiple we'll just have like this 
directory structure per se, right? I'm actually interesting if you if I do this, will it work? No. No. Okay. But I agree, I mean it makes more sense to me. So in my case, well, if we are going to do this, well, I guess, um, what else is here? Get list, metadata, patch put, rollback, undelete, destroy. Uh, let's, let's do this. So, revolt kv, um, was it secret? Oh, it was secret. So secret uh, CSR destroy delete okay so now if I say vault a KB get secret CSR this should be empty well it still says that it is created Interesting. Does it matter which pass I'm using? You know, you here you have like secret and cubbyhole. I don't know what that means. Um, Both met token entities groups namespaces. Okay. So, or do I understand correctly that you have all of your apps here at the like top level? You know, when you look here, you see like up one, up two, up four, and so on and so forth. Is this how it is? Or you have like one folder, like secret and where you have all of your apps? Hmm, okay. Well, Okay, I guess for for this example it doesn't really matter if I use this or something else. Um, let's just leave secret, you know. I like I like saying secret. I have I have many secrets, and then I'm referring to my secrets at Walt in Walt. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, okay, so secrets. Now this bothers me. I deleted. I deleted you. What did you do to me? Just okay. I remove you. You don't exist anymore. Perfect. Okay, so uh, let's do this. So vault kv. Uh, let's say put sec secret and something happened here just connection was uh, reset so we'll say secret and then we'll create like a project which will be net proc stream or something and then I will add my like variables here uh, so let's say CSR well, CSR username will be hmm No, uh, it should be this, right? It should be, no, this doesn't make sense to me. A little bit. I want multiple key value pairs, uh, pairs for the application, right? And I, we already saw that if I do put, it just deletes all of them. Secret sum up database is a name. I think I don't understand something.
yeah so make like secret network string is a username yeah but then what about you know I here I will have to specify another key so what you you would say this like CSR username and then you say CSR username is equal to Cisco this is how it should be done I hate repetition uh, but I guess this is yeah so in my case I need like a username so is this correct example or I should do it somehow differently I was thinking that you know I have like one folder with a bunch of secrets with a bunch of ant wires essentially but I don't like this double well repetition basically And if I don't specify this different pass, right, then anytime I do put, it will rewrite the whole thing. Okay, there is also Walt Wright. Walt Wright Fubar. Okay, let's, let's try this last example. Netproc stream CSR username Cisco password. what I will I'm going to try just following this for now and then we will try applying what I want okay so they say no handler they say okay this this is expected by default world enables a secret engine called kv at the past secret kv secrets engine reads and writes raw data to the backend storage Alt supports many other secrets engines besides KV and this feature makes Vault flexible and unique. For example, AWS secrets engine generates AWS uh, IAM access keys on demand. Not interested. This page discuss secret engine and operations they support. Um, to get started, enable another instance of KV secrets engine at different bus. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, Vault Secrets enabled and the bus KV. Uh, let's also see what are what has changed here. Okay, it's kind of like a new folder. Okay, the pass for secrets engine is enabled uh, defaults to the name of the secrets engine. Thus, the phone command are actually equivalent.
to verify our success and to get more information about secrets engine use world secrets list okay let's also try this okay i have secret which is default and i have this kv which we just created this shows there are four enabled secrets Take a few moments to read and write some data to the new KV secrets engine and enable it at KV. Here are a few ideas to get started. Let's go ahead and just and do that, but I'm not going to copy, I'm going to write myself. I really believe that you know the more you actually do the typing on your own, the more the more understanding you get what you're doing. Uh, Oh, no, 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 no. What did I do? Okay. So, K. Walt right KV, my secret value is Cisco123. Okay, let's go ahead and check this out. So, it should be here, my secret. Okay, and then the value there. Oh, okay, yeah, I think I could use this just, you know, key called value everywhere. Okay, now another thing is KV hello tar target world. Oh, okay, this is just another thing, okay. World KV hello target world and Walt right KV airplane the Boeing class seven eight seven world list KV. Okay, here are my secrets in the KV. So if I go here and I go back, I have this leaves basically. Okay. Disable secrets engine, no, we don't need that, dynamic secrets, uh, no, I don't, I don't think I need AWS right now, build and help, okay, let me also check the chart, yeah, it's like you do the pass as a key and the value is one thing under it, or do you use the pass with multiple key under it? I, I like multiple K KV under like one thing, but it bothers me that if I do put it, um, so if I, let's say, if I now say here, here uh, I would add, let's say type, yeah, type string, for example, right? Or I still, okay? I guess if it's similar to put operation now that the previous one was deleted. This is what I I don't really like. So let's see. Vault right KV my secret. Yeah. So th this bothers me a lot. Like if I I would like to um, vault don't rewrite all keys on right. Okay, yeah, this world right secret. This this just just bugs me. It expects that writing two key value parts with different keys to the same record or keep both of them, not erase the first one. Is this intended behavior? If so, should it be documented more clearly? Thanks, I have updated documentation. This is for Ken's intended. There are steps I follow now to update secrets. Walt read secret XYZ. We 
each key a new unique URI is associated with the value. When you write value with specifying key, you're writing the full value as put following the crude semantics. Press the approach if you find yourself forgetting to save existing data would be to spread the data to different keys which each key value identify one piece of data. For instance, you could split the keys in a JSON object to each map to a different URI subtlety here that you are storing a mapping of key to key value pars in a fact nested map. I would like to read the whole thread, sorry folks. You just think like this just just I don't know, like for me this part was not intuitive. I mean, even if I put them in different keys, then I will have everywhere, like as a, as a thing, I will have like value, right? And I, for me, it's kind of like redundant thing then. Yeah, I like this comment. I I share this feeling 100% here. Like, this is not what I expect. I also want to check this command. So if I do vault uh, vault read uh, kv kv my secret, uh, I will just have the whole list, and I guess I can say minus field type. User wants to add another field to secrets full say API token. Human executes world right because at least in the eyes of the majority of users this feels like a logical UX. They're presented with something that at the CLI looks like a nested blah 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 name and
Wow. Thank you, thank you, Quentin. Really appreciate your feedback. I like so so here are my thoughts so far, so I haven't I haven't told anything in like five minutes or so. But what I like so far is that it's very in general it's very simplistic here. Like it is, you know. <clears throat> Obviously, there are like a lot of features like, oh, you can have AWS support and blah, blah, blah. But for like common needs, you only need like this, you know, you need like kind of some kind of hierarchy and a way to store secrets. Now, these things that I just encountered where you write again to the same pass and it doesn't add a new key and it re-raises the whole tree this is just nuts to me like I and I just you know went through this github issue it started in 2015 like 2015 is 2018 I will just put put here Oh, I can do plus one. Why I can do plus one? Oh, okay. I have to sign in. Let me do that. Like, how stubborn you should you should be as a developer, not to understand that. Hey, it's not like a one user who hit this issue, right? It's multiple users hitting this issue all the time. That it's not it's unexpected UX, right? And yeah. Yeah, I, I also I in general really like their direction that they have. Very similar to something like GitLab for example. I also, you know, I I have gr great respect to GitLab. I honestly think they are one of the best examples in this uh, in the in the software development world um, and showing this kind of like business model that you mentioned. I uh, there you know a lot of stuff that they do is just just free, but. Uh, the there is an enterprise version for it and but even if you don't use enterprise it's just there are so many cool stuff in GitLab that I just wow you guys are just rocking and I have very similar feelings toward towards HashiCorp like Vagrant and uh, Vault you know a lot of people are using them but for this I I want to punch them in the face honestly like three years and it's still not solved when I write to the same to the same path with different key I do not expect that my previous data is going to get lost with different key so yeah uh, okay so it seems like I understood that they don't want to change it so I guess what I have to do, let me go back to our, um, to this, not, no, we will deal with secrets. Uh, so we are just going to create like one pass, the key we will name it as a value and that's all. So, and let's also use new syntax instead of the old syntax, even though it doesn't seem like make a lot of difference. So vault kv uh, put and then we'll say uh, secret and uh, we'll create like netprox stream 
and now we will create um, app called well not app an actual variable so let's say csr well csr no a csr username something like this um, so csr username and now we will have value is equal to Cisco and password is equal to Cisco so if I click here network stream CSR password well this is and yeah okay so now we have those parts uh, perfect So, okay, we now know how to interact with this using CLI. Uh, we can create a secret using GUI. Let's also create one. Let's say, let's say what? Netbox uh, API token, even though I don't have Netbox right now. Maximum number of versions is 10. Uh, version data is. Uh, Oh, it's just key value. So this will be value, and this will be uh, my netbox token, API token. Add, save. Okay. So okay, we we had we had uh, we were looking at how you can create it using QI. We we're looking at how to use it via the uh, CLI. This seems like the most easiest way to interact with with it, uh, honestly. Now let's the most important piece is an actual API. So let's try to find uh, how to do that. So uh, let's see. So Vault API documentation uh, over you of method need Vault. What HTTP API gives you full access? Here, okay. All API routes are prefixed with V1. Okay, let's create very simple application which uh, uses something like NetMika to get uh, to get some data. Okay, or maybe there is even like a Python world. Maybe there is even less. There's a decent Python library for it. Thank you. Perfect. So, yeah, we'll just go ahead and do that. And so, uh, Ruby, Ansible, Ansible. I don't want to see Ansible anymore. Please. Okay, Python, HVAC, and wow, there's even async library. Awesome. So, folks, tell me this. Would you like me to see doing async here or? Just sync stuff. Okay, I will not be fancy, and today I'm just going to do synchronous stuff. So pip pip install each rock. Ah, okay. You know what? We are going to do both. We still, right now, we are streaming for one hour thirty minutes. So I think I can do both. It will be fine. Okay, so I don't need this project anymore. Uh, I want to see one thing. Yeah, it's, it should be fine. So, first I have to Python, Python 3.7. Okay. Uh, I have to check if I have install if I have UV loop installed and stuff. Yeah. So let's do pip install hvac and uh, async hvac as well. I really like the name of this library though. It for me it like I almost want to pronounce evac. And some t I don't know for some reason I really like the word evac. Uh, okay, so I have 
um, HVAC and um, uh, async HVAC. Okay, perfect. So uh, let's go ahead and do stuff. Okay. So vault, where is my vault? Here. And we'll just create a simple, simple script. So um, let me think. Yeah, it should be fine. So let's do vault sync well net me call vault py okay so you will need an example but before doing that let me do this so def main uh pass name cotton main main Okay, uh, import net Miko. Uh, we will also have params, which will be uh, uh, device type iOS. I think it's Cisco iOS. Cisco iOS. And um, that oh no this that's actually it so this plus urls well hosts we will have two hosts so we'll have um 192.168 actually i don't remember i'm sorry to check this so i have my csr dev and i have csr3 okay so show up the interface brief uh, 26 and 30. Okay. Uh, so 26 and uh, 30. Okay, important Mika. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, and we are going again to collect a couple of commands. So commands will be a list of, uh, let's say, show version, show IP interface brief, and show platform software status control processor brief. Let me double check that uh, I have correct command. Yeah, perfect. So these three commands, this is what we are going to run. So uh, let me quickly get the Miko example. For some reason, I don't have here the. Uh, oh, I have here serial params inventory. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Push version. Oh, okay. I need uh, device connection. This. Let me copy this piece. So, vault okay. from the Miko import uh, connect handler. This okay. So uh, I'm not going to parse commands. I don't want to do par any parsing today. So this will be with um, let's do get outputs. Uh, we can provide well, we will just provide host and everything else. We are going to do. Let me think. If I would like to do it concurrently, so I will need to uh implement this concurrently which should be fine yeah so yeah so i need hosts and i need list of commands uh so host is going to be uh, str uh, let's also import typing from typing import list 
or let's say sequence sequence commands is going to be sequence sequence of strings and we are going to return let's say one big string as an output or actually we can return uh, I'm thinking should we return we'll just return dict str str okay so this and so this is what this is going to do we will have to first the we'll have to form we have to create the function well first I, I think I will have to check how to use the HVAC Python HVAC Client. Okay. So we will say we'll have a function get username, username password, which will say, well, I don't think we need anything really here. So uh, we will have to say you have to define the token though namespace now okay so um, vault server IP no I don't need IP <clears throat> so this will be HTTP localhost uh, okay so here get username password we will say vault token str and then this is going to be dictionary of string and um, string so you'll have to say uh, vault is equal to HVAC import HVAC so HVAC client uh, and well I guess we'll have to say that URL is equal to um, you'll have to let's do this server world server okay so URL will be world server and uh, token is equal to world token and um, we'll have to get our stuff so uh, where is this read and write client read okay so uh, username is equal to client read vault uh, vault read uh, secret full uh, let me see hmm uh, let me see what we did on CLI so we have to get this but then I also need to specify that oh give me a username so oh sorry give me a value let me see the docs uh, Oh, client, no, this is not it. So, client. 
client to treat hmm. Hmm. Okay, this bothers me a lot. So get I guess I will have to say dot value or something. So uh, let's see. So this will be Python. Oh, well, I have to go to proper folder. Vault. So this will be netmiko vault. Get username requires two positional arguments. Yeah, about that. So uh, let me create a file code.env. Oh, uh, no, sorry. Nope, nope, nope. Should be env and this file is going to say have to say what oh here we have to provide vault server and um, we'll say python well decouple config vault token something uh, we will have to import decouple here we'll say vault token is equal to and the to I, I had created another token. Let me see if that will work. So we had this one. Or maybe I will have to provide the root token, I don't know yet. So this and import decouple, blah, blah, blah. This dictionary could be rewritten. Let's do this. Does HashiCorp provide uh, for HADR pop in paid I would imagine. I don't know. This is a good, good, good question. So let me see. So HashiCorp high availability supports multi server and mod for HA. Uh, yeah, it seems it supports it, but. I do not know like how it, how good it is or something like this. I don't think I would like to cover HA today. Uh, yeah, but it seems it's supported. Okay, so it, let me see. Okay, so now let's run this. None. What? What is that supposed to mean? Is going on here? Oh, 
Oh, did I? No, I, I, I did it correctly. What is the hell is going on here? Um. Secret network stream. Network stream CSR username. CSR password. Decor of Comp, thank you very much for following. I don't understand this. So definitely there is some problem, but... Let me do this. Invalid pass for a version KV secrets engine. See API docs for the appropriate um, API endpoints to use. If using Vault CLI, use Vault KV put for this operation.
<laughs> this is just weird. It seems a debugger. So vault secrets secrets kv v2 list secrets secrets uh, pass is equal to secrets. Client secrets kv v2 configure mount point uh, secrets secret I think Honestly, I really can't believe it. Like, first I take an example. I, I took an example directly from the. Um, Let me try this example. Invalid pass for version KV secrets engine C API docs.
Let me see what's the version I have. Uh. Okay, it should be already implemented. I guess, here's the thing, I guess if I do client write kv test um, again. Okay, this works for version one. So then here, if I go to KV, okay, I see here, was it test? Yeah, it was test and I see here bar is equal to bus. So now I can say vault read is equal to KV test test and then I can say I guess bar uh, which it doesn't work so then I have to say the data uh, data this is basically an example of not so good API wrapper you see like I'm getting the back I'm getting back just the JSON you know instead of an object so this will be what this will be like this gosh this is so ugly and they seem they well the author said that now they support version 2 but I don't like the whole syntax there So what I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this um, I already <laughs> lost it here KV is version 1 and secret is version 2 so since it doesn't seem to work very easily skip uh, this version 2 I'm just going to use version 1 so here let's go ahead and create our secrets again so value is equal to Cisco and um, so our password will be this well no okay so now I should be able to say kv csr username and value but honestly I, this is ugly this is just ugly very ugly By the way, do you think it will work if I say this? No, it doesn't seem to, to be working. And it's just some, when it doesn't exist, it just returns none. This also doesn't really make sense to me. 
if I say read, I would expect some exception or something. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so if I use this, it will work. So, Quentin, thank you very much for hosting. So here I will have to change. Okay, I can delete all of this stuff. I don't think we will have time to do async today. So result username. So this will be KV. KV and they are on the top level. So we are getting a username and password here, which is fine. So uh, I can say params will be uh, get username password old server decouple config world token. Damn it. Here I will have to pass params. Params. Well, I guess I will have to actually pass the whole. Yeah. I will do. I will need to do it differently. So, um, say device info. This will be dictionary. Str any. So here I have params and then we will have a function called form device params which takes host and uh, params. So this is going to be str and this is going to be dict str, uh, str, str and uh, it returns dict, dict str. Well, actually, str here. So we will say, well, uh, result is equal to host. Well, I can do this. I can return host is equal to host and then params and then params. So what this does is that, okay, I am passing a parameter like an IP address here. It will be part of the dictionaries and I'm taking this params dictionary and I un unpack it and then I take the co this, this one and I also unpack it. So uh, yes, this should be fine. So here we are getting this and then I say, well, I also use threading here. So um, import concurrent futures. Import thread pool executor. <clears throat> and then we will say, let me think. I will have to pass my device info and commands and um, yeah so I will also need from uh, func tools import partial and then worker is going to be partial from get outputs where commands is equal to commands. And then you also have to create A worker. Hmm. 
So device devices params is going to be equal to uh, for form device params host params for host in uh, hosts. Okay, and then we are going to say this thread pool executor workers to yes, pool. We'll say pool map, and I have to double check something from previous stream here. Result pool map, and then result. Titles. Okay. Full map, and then uh, we provide. I think. Uh, worker and uh, iterable which will be devices params okay and then I can print results print result or something nah no this is going to be results so for um, For host in uh, map, hosts and results, and I will say print host and this should be zip host is equal to host and uh, Result or well, outputs will be result something like this. So if I run this now, uh, right, so Python net me cobalt. Oh, this didn't work. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah, I didn't implement this piece. So result this we is um, connect hand handler device device info is device connection uh, result. For command in commands, we are going to say a result from command uh, is going to be um, result from command is going to be device con uh, connection send command command and then we are going to return the result what happened here this connect handler okay something broke here uh, let me do this so print device info
Oh, yeah. I forgot that I have to extract the data here. So, yeah. This will be data. This is so ugly. This piece. Okay. So, I guess now this will work. Yeah, perfect. So now I get all of the outputs. So we can also like do some magic with results here. We can say, well, um, let's say print device first. And then print uh, for command output in result items. We can say um, print output from Just print our out output and then like this. So this should be better. And then at the very end we will say well I can do something like this. Just go ahead and do that again. So let's uh, analyze this output a little bit. Let's see if everything is the way we expected. Okay, so device and IP address of device, output from show version, output from show IP interface brief, show platform software status control processor brief, then separator and then another device. Yeah, so this seems to be exactly what I want. So, uh, yeah, I guess this is actually it. Uh, so, uh, before we wrap up, we will obviously you know I will conclude what we did today. Meanwhile, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, so, yeah, let's let, let's wrap up. So today we had a look at uh, HashiCorp Vault, which is a system. We, well, free product which allows you to manage your secrets securely um, instead of like putting uh, environmental variables like a bunch of environmental variables on your servers you can store, store all of your secrets in a centralized place and then your application will uh, get these secrets uh, from that system okay um so we inst well we didn't install it manually we were just using um vault in docker seems like it's working fine uh, it has users and groups but i don't really want to dig into that they have some replication as well i also don't want to dig into that in very simple use case is just basically like a page like this with a nested directories as many as you want where at some point you have your key and values uh, they have very convenient cli client uh, vault cli now uh, let me critique it a little bit i don't like that when you write it uh, when you want to write multiple key value pairs it basically deletes whatever was there and 
you know, writes only your keys that you specified. So it's not really an update when you write. It actually, if you have multiple keys, all of them are going to be deleted and new ones are going to be written. For me, this is the most questionable UX decision ever here. This is not what I expect as a user. Yes, it's written in docs and blah, 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 but it's still it's not what I expect. Um, so in order to work around this, we had to create this uh, kind of structure where uh, we were using as a key, I was using a static string called value everywhere. And honestly, I don't really like it. So I don't like this kind of like this key for me is, is, is redundant in this uh, scenario. But they also do not offer me to change one key at a time. So uh, this kind of strange. So another piece is that um, they have two, like version one key value store, like this, and uh, we, where you have vault write and vault read commands, and then they have this uh, KV uh, KV version two, where they use vault I think KV or something, whatever. Uh, here is another piece which is not vault's fault, but is still kind of a problem is that Python client, it seems to be working with version two, but the syntax is just not cool. I I would expect to work with this key, KV version two the same way it works with version one, instead of just doing, you know, like some weird stuff. Another thing, and again, this is also ju just about the library itself is uh, they give you when you do vault read here with this library they give you a json and then you go ahead and you extract data using json honestly i don't f i i feel like again this is also questionable user experience here, but it's just from the library point of view. Um, in the end, I would say that, well, it solves an important problem. The whole world product solves an important problem. And if I have a need to store uh, secrets in centralized place, I would use it. But I would also be open for other like similar products. So if there is something else which allows you to self-host it in your environment, um, all the stuff, you know, I would probably check it out just because of some this some a couple of weird behaviors that I did not expect. That said, if there is nothing like this uh, as mature as Vault, um, you know, I would stick with Vault even regardless of these kind of small problems. So, yeah, mainly because it just solves an important problem. It seems even if I didn't like something, it still, it still feels like it's not hard to use. I'm listening. And just when I was telling this, my Siri got activated again. Okay, so, um, okay, as a final note, I would like to remind you folks that I am always, um, first, I'm always curious about any kind of network automation that you're doing, like today, just before the stream, Othak Muffin, one of our viewers shared, shared his network automation story, what he's doing at work, really interesting, thank you for sharing, and I, I hope you will continue sharing with me stuff like this. Another piece is that, as I told you, my list of potential topics for streams is getting exhausted. Uh, it's getting exhausted. Uh, yes, it's being ex exhausted slowly. And uh, if you have any kind of ideas that you would like me to cover, uh, or products, or you know, you have some network automation idea and you don't know how to approach it, uh, let me know. 
maybe I will select it as a topic of the next stream um, or you know some future stream so with that thank you very much for watching and I wish you an easy working week uh, take care and I will see you in one week from now bye everyone